Because within us, there's a lot of times internal struggles. There's a battle between good and evil. There's a battle within ourselves of being worthy and not worthy. Many of us may not show that or say it or speak about it, but there's crossroads within ourselves. Even the psalmist said, why am I so lost within myself? There are moments in our lives where we find ourselves struggling between the flesh and the spirit. And that battle brings turmoil, turmoil to our lives. Because there's an old person that attempts to come up. The things that I used to do, I no longer do. But there are moments where there's a struggle between that good and that bad. There's a, 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 the way we want to respond many a times, if it wasn't for the Spirit leading us, oh, we would find ourselves in so much trouble. But we learn through the Spirit to bridle our tongue. We hold fast. We contain ourselves. But that's the authority that the Holy Spirit has given us. The scriptures tell us in Ephesians 1.13 that when we first believed, we were sealed with that spirit. Ephesians 1.13 tells us, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it's a seal. It helps us get to that destination, to the purpose which he has instilled in our lives or the purpose as believers that we should get to. In other words, there is a response that he would like for us to fulfill. There is an action that he would like for us to accomplish. But in our flesh, sometimes we ruin that. But that seal, let's say it's like a stamp on a letter. If you don't put the stamp on the letter, what happens to that, to that, to that envelope? It comes back. It doesn't make the mark. The seal is what makes the difference. And that's what the Holy Spirit is in us. That seal helps us to overcome our flesh, that battle, that struggle within ourselves. And, and what I testified here was, believe it or not, as hype as I can be and as sure as I may look, there's a constant battle in my life of finding myself unworthy, feeling that I am not able to accomplish. But then, as I mentioned, I look around me and see the disposition that the Holy Spirit has taken me to. I say, wow. Only but grace and mercy. Only but grace and mercy. Sometimes I looked around certain rooms uh, right before, right after the storm of Maria. I was called into an office, and when I looked across the office, I, I said, what am I doing here? I looked across. I seen the mayor's office. I looked across. I seen the governor's office. I seen the senator. And I said, what am I doing here? But that just goes to show us that he said, I will send you a comforter to guide you in all truth and in all justice. That Holy Spirit will allow us to do things that we would never believe that we were capable of doing. The Holy Spirit leads us. It shows us. It gives us strength. It gives us courage. It's just an amazing opportunity when you come to Christ to allow that spirit to lead you to where he would like for you to be. Now, you were sealed with that spirit, as we read in Ephesians 1.13. And it is necessary for us to have that spirit. Nic Nicodemus came to Jesus at nighttime, and he said, um, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how is it possible for me to enter the womb of my mother for a second time? You find that in the book of John chapter 3. How is it possible for me to be reborn? How is it possible for me to enter into my mother's womb for a second time? Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, that you must be reborn of water and of spirit. 
The Spirit is an intricate role in our lives because the Spirit dictates to us what we ought to do and what we shouldn't do. Yes, there's a constant battle between our flesh and the Spirit. It's a constant battle. Our battle, we say sometimes, is the enemy, the devil. No, that struggle is with our flesh. That fight is within ourselves. But that's where we lean not unto our understanding. That's where we trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. Now, I know that we are speaking about the fruit of the Spirit, but the Spirit has fruit. We're speaking about the Spirit. Last several weeks, Pastor Tim has spoke about um, love. He spoke about joy. And today we're speaking about that peace, that peace of mind. Yes, there's the peace of God. There's a peace within others. There's a peace of within ourselves, and there's a peace of the Holy Spirit. And I will, as I move forward, I'll show you some examples of that peace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Now, Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of the Peace that we ought to have. And sometimes that peace is easier to find. Well, we know clearly that we, we were enemies of God, and, and through Jesus, he made, he made that peace. He, he drew us together. He drew us as one. But sometimes the hardest peace is the peace within ourselves. That struggle that you and I have is that peace of mind, peace of the heart. If I was to allow my flesh take over of what I couldn't do, I would never be able to fulfill some of the things that I've accomplished. But the beautiful thing is that I could no longer, I cannot take credit for some of my actions. I would literally and always have to say, only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Prince of Peace, he's given us so many examples. One in the scriptures, I, I think that it was just so perfect of his peace is found in the book of Matthew chapter 8. We know that the disciples were on a boat and, and a storm arose. Now that storm was everybody's storm. The disciples came to him, you, you, you're sleeping. You don't care that we perish. But imagine that. In the midst of the storm, obviously storms cause havoc. Storms make us suffer. Storms, we believe at times that, you know, it can, may be the end of our lives. There, there's a concern. But the Prince of Peace rested in the middle of the storm. The perfect prince of peace was steadfast. He, was in, he is immovable. He did not concern himself because he had the last word. Because we know he is the, the one that has the power and authority even from the beginning to speak into existence what is or what isn't. In that case, he had dominion over the water, but more importantly, he had dominion over the disciples that were on that boat. The beauty is that they went to Jesus in the middle of the storm. For what? Seeking the peace, the peace that only he can give. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. There's a peace that no people, places, or things can give you. Not your Social, economical, 
situation or lifestyle, there's a peace that only comes through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. There, there was a woman here called Teresa. She was one of our sisters in, in church. Teresa's son went to Iraq, I believe it was. She said, my son went to, he's in Iraq. Help me pray for him. I said, oh, my God, let's pray. Let's pray that he comes back, that his safety. And I was just so overwhelmed with the news that her son is in a battle zone. She looked over at me and said, Ben, you know better than that. She said, God is in control, and what's going to happen is going to happen. If he lives and comes back home, amazing. But if I lose him to a war, I believe the scriptures that says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. There was a peace about her. Her heart was settled. She truly believed in what she confessed. And she allowed others to feel, meaning myself, what she felt. You know, the fruit of the Spirit, as Pastor has been telling us, it's not tangible. It's not something you can touch. It's not nothing that you can see. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was explaining the Holy Spirit about being reborn to Nicodemus, he says, you see the wind? No, none of us have seen the wind. But can't we feel the effects of the wind? It blows our hats off. I like my hair nice and it blows it to the side. I get a little angry, but that's okay, folks. That's okay, you can laugh. Whoa. (laughs) Um, You feel the effects. Our trash cans blow over when the wind hits. The effects of the wind. And the effects of the Holy Spirit is that others can feel that there's something extraordinary about you. Because you can't purchase this in a bookstore. You can't ask any of your friends for the Holy Spirit. Because the, 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 the gifts, the fruit of that Spirit is amazing. It shows the world that there's something out of the ordinary about you. In this case, it was Teresa. Teresa I couldn't see what she felt, but I felt what she said because she believed it. And that is a peace of the heart, a peace of the mind, having that peace of the Holy Spirit within you. It, it's uncomprehensible. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us exactly that. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, it's uncomprehensible. There are moments where others may say, or you may even say, as I said with Teresa, I I don't understand this. But it's not place, our place to understand. There's no way of explaining that peace. There's a story that I want to read to you, and it's exactly that. It transcends. The peace of God transcends all understanding. And it's a story about a pastor, Davy. Davy Blackburn, who lost his wife and unborn child to an armed home intruders, but he already forgiven them. You don't understand that. It's hard to comprehend. You take the life of my loved ones and to stand up and say, I forgive you. It's difficult, but the peace that he gives us is exactly that. It transcends all understanding. You may not like it. You may not want it. You may not understand it. 
But it's not our place to understand what the Spirit has us to do or not to do. And I'll read the story. Their cases are still pending. Authorities believe that Larry Taylor, Jalen Watson, and Deano Gordon broke into Blackburn's Indianapolis home on November 10th, 2015, stole Amanda's Blackburn's ATM card, and shot her three times. The couple's then 15-month-old son, Weston, was upstairs in his crib at the time and remained unharmed. Davy Blackburn and his wife Amanda, the couple and Amanda, wife Amanda, the couple moved to Indianapolis to establish Resonate Church. Davy Blackburn and his wife Amanda, the couple moved to Indianapolis. And there's a video on Facebook, posted also on YouTube, of his first public appearance since November. Davy Blackburn addressed his feelings towards the alleged murderers. While speaking with the New Spring Church, Pastor Perry Noble in Anderson, South Carolina, what I had to realize is that forgiveness is a decision that I had to wake up and make every single morning, said Davy Blackburn. I've forgiven them today, and and I'll get up tomorrow, and I'll forgive them. The decision should come as no surprise to those familiar with Pastor or the case. As after less than two weeks since Davy Burns, Burn Burn, discovered his wife bleeding on the floor of their home, the pastor made it clear he did not despise the perpetrators of the crime. Davy and Amanda Blackburn with their son Weston, Davy and Amanda Blackburn with their son Weston. Though every inside me wants to hate, be angry, and slip into despair, I choose the root of forgiveness, grace, and hope. He said in a statement November 23rd, 2015, posted on his church Facebook page, if there is one thing I've learned from Amanda in the 10 years we were together is this, choosing to let my emotions drive my decision is a recipe for hopelessness and fruit, fruitless life. Today I'm deciding to love, not to hate. You have to have peace. In order to give Someone, something that you have, you must have. We speak to others in the midst of their trials and tribulations, and we say, you know, be still, have peace. But it's one thing saying it, and it's another believing it. This man lost his wife, yet the peace in his heart through the Holy Spirit, that fruit is what allows him day after day to forgive others. In order to give others, you must first have. You know, there's a, and I I witnessed this, some years ago, a friend of mine, and I'll refrain from saying his name, his employee borrowed a credit card and spent $15,000. If I'm correct, it was gambling. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, you remember what I said, started off by saying that there's a constant battle between good and evil? Well, you steal $15,000 of mine. I think I'm going to be battling what I'm going to do next. No one's supposed to laugh. Come on, folks. Your human nature, there's, there's, there's a human nature that reacts, our old person, who I used to be. As we know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that, behold, the old passes away. That old man sometimes wants to come up. We know, we know that when, you have, when you're baptized, it's symbolic to what? The old going under, the old man dying and being reborn again. That reborn person is an awesome person because we let the Spirit lead us. But once in a while, out of that grave, that old man wants to get up. You take $15,000 of mine, which I may, I don't have, but I can assure you the old man is going to try to creep up. Because that's our nature. But this man was spilt, filled with the Spirit. He sat there. He said, obviously, you've stolen. I kind of cringed and said, 
oh, what's going to come next? But the words that came next out of his mouth was, I forgive you. The peace that he had within himself transcended to someone else and maybe forever transformed somebody's life forevermore. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It transcends. The Holy Spirit transcends the common person that we are, that old person. We may not understand it because it's not our place to understand. Jesus told the disciples, what you don't understand now, you'll understand later. You will battle within yourself between good and evil. There's going to be a fight of why you shouldn't. I want to, believe it or not, not be a part of anything. I want to sit in the back of a church like any average person, go in, come out, not have to get up every Saturday morning to feed because it's tiring. It's, when you are a believer, it hurts. It hurts because it's sacrificial what we're called to do. But nevertheless, when we're obedient to the Spirit, you know what happens? Our praise starts, turns into worship. Our praise turns into worship. Because some people don't understand that your worship is where he has brought you from, what he's brought you through, some of your sacrifices. And those sacrifices... You're able to overcome only through the Holy Spirit. But thank God for that fruit. Because fruit sometimes is for others. Paul says that we are open books, right? When you go to the grocery store to buy fruit. How many of us shake some fruit? Tap on some fruit? Squeeze some fruit? Because you want to make sure you get the right one. You want to find that there's evidence that that is the right one. In our lives, since we're an open book, people will seek you out. They'll seek you and I out. Because they can see in us something that is tasty. Something that appeals to them. Something that stands out from your average person. The this, this seal of the Spirit is not to be taken lightly. That Spirit that we have, oh, we'll showcase. But it will showcase in the most difficult times of our lives. We heard the story of Teresa. We've seen the Spirit. Wow me. This pastor that forgave the murderers of his of his wife, that stands out. But that's only because of the seal, which is the spirit, and the fruit will bear sooner or later. Truth be told, the spirit will set you free. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you.